Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video. I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial of the new Real ACARS software which lately I have been using in my videos and also off videos because it's like a really cool feature to get from flightsim.co and I have to tell you I am really enjoying it. So I thought today I would take you through the bits and bobs about real A cars and what you can expect and how it benefits you during your flights as well. So first of all I'm going to show you how to download the software and I'm going to take you through the rest of the information about it. Okay, so you've probably seen this a lot on your trending downloads on flightsim.co recently. And I thought I just had to pick this up about, well, 17 days ago by the looks of it. So the real ACARS is essentially sending ACARS data from this system to your aircraft and you can have loads of different information sent to your aircraft such as load sheets, takeoff reports, landing reports, uh, connected schedules, possible aircraft change and etc etc loads more bits and bobs. If you want to give it a read about what this actually entails then I'll see be the link in the description below. Um, I usually use it mostly for the Phoenix A320, but it also does give you a list of what's compatible and what's not compatible in the description of the download. Um, I have tried it in the 777, but I can't remember much about it, but I mainly use, like I said, for the Phoenix A320. Down here as well, it gives you some more future plans and what they're expecting. But without further ado, let's just show you how you download it. So once you've clicked your download button, you're going to want to come to your files and then you're going to run the installer and once you run the installer you're going to get the real ACARS I have it on my desktop just it's easier to access you will need this program open during the flight at all times as it talks from the program to the aircraft and obviously you do also need a valid hoppy ID ACARS which will also be in the description below to get you set up so within this so this is a system once you open it up you're going to get your latest call sign departure and arrival all of your basic information about the flight you're about to do through SimBrief, which you do by going to the general settings page. So once you're in the general settings page, you input your SimBrief username, which is mine is the Aviation Jack, and also your Hoppy logon code. With this Hoppy logon code, you find this in your emails once you signed up for Hoppy ACARS. And then obviously everything gets spoken to the Sim and then also spoken to the ACAR system itself. If I just take you through these settings really quickly, so over here, all of these little boxes at the top, these decide what ACARS messages you receive into the SIM and what ones you do not want to receive into the SIM. So for example, here in the preferences page, you can get a load sheet sent to you and also a final load sheet. Obviously in the Phoenix, you already get a load sheet sent to you. So ideally you don't want to be doubling up on how many load sheets you get. However, for the purpose of this video, we'll just check a few boxes. So if we click yes to the load sheet and also the final load sheet, then in the sim, once we finish boarding and the ACARS, and the ACARS decides that we're going to send you a message now, the load sheet, it will send you a load sheet. Pretty self-explanatory there. Um, you can also do the timings. You can change the timings around. Obviously, I don't really use these ones because we already have the load sheet um, in the sim. Next is airline communication, and this is more of the fun part. So as you can see here, these are the ones I have ticked, but you can tick multiple different settings as well. So you can also send a takeoff report, and each and next box you have your information page, and this information box basically tells you what information you're going to be receiving. So here the takeoff report contains crucial information for takeoff procedures and performance, and it's sent after you receive your primary load sheet. And then also you think you have the off block time one. So this message confirms the company has received and recorded your off block time. It will be sent four minutes after your engines are started. And I'll see you keep going through the rest of them. So the ones I have ticks is the off block time and also the possible aircraft change, next leg change, and also what is this one actually? This will notify you of any issues related to the operation of your company. Oh there we go. So I have this one enabled as well. You can enable all of them, but you'll just start seeing duplicates as well because obviously the Phoenix does send through similar messages. Next is the service comms. Now this is probably one of my favourite features as we also get sent slot notifications. And in case you know what a slot is, a slot is basically something that's given out by air traffic control to give you a departure restriction. This can be used based on heavy traffic in the skies, weather, anything that can basically push your departure back than the scheduled time that you were given. 
So here says slot notification is a message containing an overview of your slot information. You must confirm things like origin and destination, your estimated off block time and more. So then here we have um, Inspector Gate. This isn't actually a feature yet. It does require the Navigraph and also they haven't actually implemented the system just yet. Space launch is an interesting one. Um, it will notify you of real life things as well, such as space launches and natural disasters funny messages and special events. The only one I have ticked is the natural disasters because obviously, as it says here, uh, storms, earthquakes and volcanoes and wildfires that might affect your flight plan. So in case there's a wildfire or a volcano, you might wish to divert. And this is what this natural disaster message is useful for. As well as this, you have a documents page you can click and take you through everything as well. Um, personally, I really enjoy this system as it just makes things feel more realistic. Um, I'll show you what we get as well. So, once you've put your SIM brief username into the real A cars, if you press import OFP, it comes up with your latest flight initialization plan. So, here you can see we're easy 321, just a random call sign. Departure from Nantes and arrival at Gatwick, S Wayne's time departure, S Wayne's time arrival, and our aircraft. And then, once you have imported your OFP and you are in the SIM, make sure you press start flight so the sim knows that you've started the flight and the ACARS also knows that you've started the flight. So after importing latest RFP, hit start flight button to allow real cars to initiate its hoppy algorithm. Ensure that your aircraft is spawned and on the ground. To set up your messages, visit the other pages and configure everything to let real cars match the message flow to your preference. So as you can see, I haven't pressed start flight yet. But if I press start flight now, as you can see here, it says flight started successfully and the ACARS is talking to the sim in real time, basically notifying everything that I've been doing. And let me show you a few of the ACARS messages that we get sent through. So here is one example of the slot message. So if you actually, in the real ACARS, obviously you've selected the send slot notification, you will then get a, um ACARS message that said CTOP, which is the slot, um, say it's at 9.24 and then your estimated off block time will be at 9.15 so say if your scheduled departure was at 9 in the morning but they gave you a slot at 9.24 then your estimated on, off block time will be 9.15 but this is your new departure time um, this is like your pushback time so that's one of the messages you can get um, as well as this you also get other ones such as your performance data which the airline sends to you and what they're expecting you to use um, and then obviously here's all your load sheets as well. So you do get all of this into the sim and then obviously this is the message you get if there's some kind of event going on nearby, um, like a rocket launch for example, which must be quite rare to be honest, but you must get it at some point. Um, and then yeah, so you can have a look at all the messages they can send in, including like your takeoff performance. Obviously not all of these you need to use because you do get them automatically, um, but it is useful to know as well as what aircraft um, they are compatible with. So we know that the Inibills A300 is not compatible, Phoenix is compatible, Fly-by-Wire is compatible, the 777 is compatible, this requires testing, MD-11 is compatible, and so is the MD-80. So yeah guys, if you do want to download real A cars and have a go of this, have a bit of fun with it, do download it. I'm going to put all the links in the description below, um, such as real A cars link, copy A cars, um, and all those bits and bobs um, and subscribe for more videos obviously and I'll see you all in the next one I hope you all enjoy using this little fun program see you in the next one bye bye